some of my experiences are really humiliating for me. Sorry. <laughs> oh, don't cry. Now she's claiming it's not her fault. Her community was just getting too negative for her. I don't think anyone can dispute Lana Rhodes is one of the most famous performers on the internet, with her videos receiving billions of views between her lewd and non-lewd appearances. Despite her being so famous though, I was surprised to see that no one has really broken down the true story behind her, but rather just do surface level breakdowns regurgitating from wiki articles and headlines, lacking context for their claims. After spending the past month digging into it myself though, I discovered a tragic tale of an abused woman that has suffered from mental illness and tragedy every step of the way, with a deep backstory that truly repaints the actions of one of the internet's leading ex-adult entertainers. But I'm getting ahead of myself here, so let me start at the beginning. Lana Rhodes was born Amara Laney Maple on September 6, 1996. Her parents split before she was born, and while she didn't experience their initial separation, she dealt with a lot of emotional turmoil during their brutal custody battle. Me and my sister weren't allowed to like our dad growing up because my mom would get angry and yell at us, basically. The young woman described her mother as a very intelligent person who was a workaholic. Due to this, Lana was a latchkey child, with an independent streak from a young age. She grew up with her sister, who was four years older than her in the suburbs of Chicago. While growing up with a single mother is hard enough, what occurred next would turn her childhood into a walking nightmare. It all started to go downhill at the age of seven when her sister's behavior began to drastically change. Something horrible had happened that at first no one knew, which triggered her older sister to start pulling out all her hair. Their overworked mother had no idea why her daughter was doing this, and Lana was too young to understand. Eventually, the doctors diagnosed her with trichotillomania when she was only 11. This condition compulses people to forcibly remove body hair, and can happen after a stressful event which at the time they believed to be because of the divorce. However, Lana's sister would not get better and by 12, the girl developed a severe eating disorder, making her sickly thin. The young Lana didn't understand why her sister looked the way she did, but vividly remembers being afraid. And I just really didn't understand. I was like, well, she looks like a monster because I was, I'm much younger than her. And she started that at like eight. So, so I must have been four, like four or five. Wow. And I was scared of her. Despite medical intervention for the struggling older sister, and nothing seemed to work. And the eating disorder turned into self-harm. At only 13, the sibling tried to take her life weekly, which resulted in the police being called often, creating a chaotic environment for the young girl to grow up in. Lana's sibling needed to be monitored 24-7, and since her mother worked late, someone else needed to be responsible. This ended up being the nine-year-old Lana. This young child was now entrusted to make sure her sister didn't hurt herself, all while trying to go to elementary school. This did not work out well, and the adult star has since admitted to not really getting a public education because of her home life. Young Lana developed severe anxiety over the situation and was mostly forgotten in her family because of her older sister needing so much attention. Her sibling's condition only worsened as she was eventually diagnosed with schizophrenia. On top of that, Lana's situation was abusive as well. She explains that as a kid, she was hit by her mom and shocked to learn that other kids did not experience the same. She has mentioned that her mother never validating her emotions is what led her to develop mental illness herself. Up until recently, this is all we knew about her childhood, but Lana has become much more open with the horrific events from her past in a Tumblr blog she started in 2023. In a post here, she breaks down a moment when a parent, which is surmised to be her mother, slapped the adolescent Lana and ripped out her hair, which triggered her to believe that no one loved her. At only six years of age, she felt betrayed. After being left in the car to cry alone, she tightly wrapped a scarf around her neck, claiming to have felt relief from the act. This is cited as one of the reasons she later developed borderline personality disorder. She even goes into more detail here about why her sister may have developed her mental illness. Before her Tumblr diaries, Lana has only ever mentioned that a close family member took advantage of her sister, and the trauma was so great that it destroyed her brain resulting in schizophrenia. Lana claimed that she had never experienced any sexual abuse herself, though. The thing is, on her Tumblr, she gave more context for the abuse. 
At only six, her father gave her a ton of toys for her birthday. Later, he brought the girls into the basement alone and said extremely creepy comments towards them. Lana would later post about how her sister was now 30 with a wasted life. How could someone do that to their own daughter? It's not fair that I will forever be in pain, that you no longer live in this reality because it's too painful. Further calling her father a pervert and her mother mentally ill, Lana may have buried these tragic interactions but later unlocked them when she started going to therapy. Having to always care for such a disturbed sibling and feeling invisible, Lana wanted to find an escape. That's when, in her early teens, she stumbled upon some of the most beautiful women she had ever seen on TV. They had perfect bodies and big smiles, wearing all the latest fashions, while having fun all day long. They hung out by the pool and jumped on trampolines, and their lives just seemed so ideal. Lana began to glamorize the Playboy bunnies. She believed these stunning women had everything they could ever want. Their lives seemed worlds away from what Lana was going through, and being one of these women became her dream. She even shockingly told her guidance counselor her plans to be a playmate. They're like, don't you want to focus on school? Like, don't you want to go to college? Like, you're going to be a loser. Like, you're not going to have any money. You're not going to do anything. And I was like, no, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And they're like, well, that's not going to happen. Plus, like, you probably need therapy because who should do porn? At only the age of 14, she started dating a much older man that was in a group she describes as a hippie criminal organization. Lana admits that she only joined the group to feel some form of belongingness that she was missing at home. The hippie criminals would break into houses and use Lana to crawl into the window or drive the getaway car. She tells stories of engaging in sexual acts at an IHOP before dining and dashing. We were at IHOP and I gave them a under the table at IHOP and they did catch us, but not like during the blob. They let me like continue doing the blob. But then I was a really, really, really bad, like, troubled kid, and we <laughs> dine and dashed. Her luck was going to run out after claiming to have over 20 arrests before finally being sent to a detention center at just 16. Going to jail turned out to be a blessing in disguise. She claims it put her in a better path and saved her from becoming a drug addict as she had already tried heroin. In prison, she felt loved for the first time in her entire life. This led Lana to get her GED at 16 after she dropped out of school at 14. Upon release, she got a job at the Tilted Kilt at 17. I should note that this is considered illegal according to the company that states that employees must be 18 due to the scandalous nature of the restaurant that has the waitresses wearing skimpy clothing. Lana was shocked at being hired believing she was not pretty enough, and this started her awareness of her ability to make money from her body. By the time Lana turned 18, she was making good money at the Tilted Kilt, when a much older gentleman began giving her a lot of attention there. John was a regular at the establishment, and the two began dating despite a 14-year age gap. This ended up being the man she allegedly lost her virginity to, and has repeatedly claimed that he was the only sexual partner she had ever had before starting in the adult industry. The difference between me and those girls that I've noticed is that before I did porn, I was only with one guy, like I, I didn't hook up with people. I've never been a girl who has, like, I only had one partner before I did porn. Wow. However, she has contradicted this by talking about other sexual experiences at 16. So um, whenever I was 16, as I was telling Lena earlier, I was a virgin till I was 18. I never even kissed a guy from my high school, but there was one guy who I did anal with whenever I was 16. After only a month together, Lana tattooed John's name on her rear end, and the two soon married as Lana began working at a strip club. She describes her ex-husband as Syrian and very controlling. If she wore a low-cut top, John would rip it up and didn't want her working in the adult industry despite it being her dream. Lana would eventually resort to lying to her husband, telling him she was bartending while actually stripping. It was around this time she rekindled a relationship with her estranged father who would give her rides to and from the gentleman's club. Before he could find out about her scandalous job, John got into legal trouble dealing with stock trading and ended up being sent to prison. Lana was devastated, but willing to make the marriage work with him behind bars. However, the convict broke it off, leaving her feeling abandoned once again. Despite this, they were still married on paper for years after. To make up for the financial loss, she continued stripping and no longer having to hide it from John. 
As well as dancing, she started selling pictures of her feet to online sugar daddies and traveling around to different clubs. Even though she enjoyed parts of being a stripper, she soon learned the dark side of it. I went to this strip club to become a dancer and that was fine. I actually like miss it sometimes, but there were circumstances where guys would touch you or, or grab you in ways that they weren't supposed to. And so I never thought of that happening. With sex work experience and no spouse to hold her back, it was at this point that Lana decided to finally make the plunge into adult movies. In 2016 at only 18, the young woman sent email inquiries to top adult agents when the famous Mark Spiegler responded back and offered to fly her to LA, providing her free board in his house. Originally, the teenager only wanted to shoot with other women. However, Mark refused to sign her until she agreed to do more. This was the first red flag in their turbulent relationship. The young woman was one step closer to being an adult star. All that was still needed was a stage name, Lana Rhodes. But right from the very beginning of filming, things started to go very wrong. After moving to LA, she made her debut alongside adult star Manuel Ferreira, who was much older than her, and not too long after, the two would begin a relationship. According to her, they never had sex outside of filming, but the man would cheat on her with other women, even hiring escorts. He refused to be intimate with Lana because he believed that she looked like his mother and only wanted to cuddle. Lana left the relationship behind quickly because it was quite frankly very weird, and on top of this, her manager did not want her to date. Speaking of her agent, she didn't like living with him because she felt Mark's management style was too aggressive. He had three jobs with us. There's a f***ing and sucking, and then there's two tough ones. Don't make me look bad, and don't give me sh to worry about. Mm -hmm. So if I have to worry about stuff that... That's it. With Lana's notability in the space growing, she claimed Mr. Spiegler was giving her too much work, causing health problems, severe anxiety, and exhaustion. She alleges that he would scream at her constantly, refusing to let her go to doctor's appointments and pressuring her into doing scenes she wasn't comfortable with. At this point, Lana was realizing that her dream had turned into a dysfunctional nightmare. After only being in the industry for four months and having shot over 31 scenes, she decided to quit due to the terrible conditions and poor pay. She had explained that most girls only make $900 a scene while she was making $1,200 due to demand. However, she feels this was not nearly enough. When asked why she never advocated for herself, she claimed it was because she feared her manager. With all these considerations, Lana claims that she quits, but when you actually look deeper into it, many people contest this point. The claim was even refuted by her ex-manager, Spiegler himself. I mean, I don't think she really, she just thought she was gonna scam a bunch of people, make a bunch of money, and that would be it. I also can't help but point out this is exactly what I would imagine an adult entertainment manager would look like. Regardless of the true reason behind the exit, being out of the industry led Miss Rhodes to start taking college classes. But when tax season rolled around, the ex-adult star realized she hadn't been putting away money to pay Uncle Sam. It was at this time when someone in the industry reached out to her offering $40,000 to do her first sodomy scene. Due to her circumstances, she agreed and was then pulled back into the X-rated world for another four months. She even did an interview with creepy porn guy and serial rapist Ron Jeremy. This is one of the worst interviews I have ever seen in my life, with Lana and Ron in a small bed together while a guy films them with a potato quality camera. It's abundantly clear that Mr. Jeremy wasn't even listening to the young woman, asking her the same questions over and over again. At the end, he asks Lana to show her breasts before forcibly tugging on her shirt as she hurries to cover herself. It's clips like these that show you just how seedy the adult entertainment industry can get. And Lana found herself right back in the center of it. By this point, she was one of the top 10 X-rated stars in the entire world. Coomers were obsessed with Lana Rhodes, as her demand skyrocketed like never before, as she re-entered the scene with 406 total film credits over just eight months she was shooting. It seemed at first things were going better under a new manager, Derek Hay, who owned LA Direct Models. Lana received a lot of success with his company, being nominated for several awards while constantly being sought after. The downside was that Lana's panic attacks were getting worse, and Derek kept on pushing her. I started talking to this man. He would say things like, oh, all the good sluts um, do gang for cheap. The good sluts get for $500 and they would really glamorize doing 
more for less money because that's what worked for them. She even suffered rectal bleeding, but claims her manager felt like she needed to continue with the scene before seeing a doctor. You know, I actually like broke it one time. Broke your yeah. How does that work? Um, I don't know. I just woke up one day and I was like in excruciating pain and then I went to the doctor. She opened up later about what those last few months of filming were like for her. I would go home and I would call my friend Stephanie and cry and be like, girl, I want to kill myself. I can't do this anymore. They want me to do this disgusting shit the next day. I'll have to do this hardcore scene. I can't do it. Lana felt humiliated by all the degeneracy she was involved in, including group scenes as well as having to drink different types of bodily fluids on camera. On top of feeling the need to perform degrading acts, the partner selection for the scenes also became sickening. While mainstream performers know they'll not always be able to choose who they shoot with, Lana couldn't help but sometimes become disgusted, such as when she showed up to film with an 80-year-old. It was in those moments that it no longer felt like a performance, but rather an assault on her sanity. With that being said, despite her apparent lack of enthusiasm, she continued down the path anyway by her own volition, even if she was prodded that route by the money. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to go into too much detail. Like, honestly, some of my experiences are really humiliating for me, and I wish that they never happened. Sorry. <laughs> oh, don't cry. <laughs> It's interesting to point out that Lana claims she left her first manager, Mark, because he was giving her too much work. But looking at her filmography, it's apparent she shot way more frequently after she re-entered the space, even though she has since reframed the revival as just needing to pay her taxes. Regardless of the true reason why she kept on doing it, it wasn't just the scenes that were taking a toll on Lana, but the pressure to keep up her appearance. She decided to undergo breast implants, a nose job, and various other fillers. At the time, and we got illegal butt injections <laughs> in a hotel room. Oh my god. We flew to Atlanta, but we went to somewhere called El Ferretta, stayed at like a Motel 7, some sh like that. Oh, sh there's a Motel um, 7. A woman oh, came with like giant horse needles and a jug of silicone. She injected this into her body because a previous BBL surgery failed, leaving her with scars and feeling there was no legitimate option to turn to. Just a few years later, she decided to remove all the fillers and implants, believing she looked weird. So that was like my second. I, I did that two times. My butt was way too big after the second time. About a year ago, <laughs> I got part of my ass literally chopped off. With the painful procedures and kinky scenes, it's not surprising that the young woman was going down a very dark path which would come to a head when she attended the 2018 AVN Awards. You see, before going on stage, she was drinking with other adult stars, when an unnamed party member decided to offer Lana cocaine. After the drugs worked their way into her system, something in her brain snapped. She allegedly went on stage and accused her agent, Mr. Hay, of sleeping with the girls he managed, and threw a shoe at his head. After the fight, the belligerent starlet made her way outside the Tampa venue, which is when she ran off into the night before jumping into crocodile-infested waters. After being scooped out, she was transported directly to a mental institution. Miss Rhodes would then tell the story in an interview, but surprisingly, besides this mention, the freakout wasn't well documented publicly. And my friend called me and she was like, this never happened, by the way. These girls that were there, they went online and one of them posted scratches on her neck and said that I beat her up. I did not. Jesus. I did not. This led me to scour the internet to find a video of the fight. It must exist considering the amount of people in attendance. I eventually found the award show and watched it in full, but no sign of the callout here either. It was at this point that I assumed Alana may have been exaggerating the story, but that's when I found mention of another fight she supposedly had at the awards show with fellow adult star Adriana Chechik. This woman actually did accuse Lana of having a childish meltdown, providing picture evidence of a large gouge on her neck, despite Lana claiming she hadn't hurt anyone that night in her recounting. It isn't just one adult star that backs up Adriana's side of events, as people recounted the brawl on Twitter. The altercation started when Lana allegedly threw a fit, feeling she deserved the award for editor's choice. She then tried to fight the winner, Adria Ray. This is when Chechik jumped into action trying to calm Lana down before she did anything rash. Amidst the scuffle, Lana had brutally scratched the back of Adriana's neck. The victim took to Twitter to speak to her fans about the incident. 
I am an honest person and true to myself and fans. Yes, it happened. Ask yourself who has marks and who doesn't. It's assault. What you see and believe to be true is not who she is. She has physically harmed me and emotionally caused distress. Megan Rain, another adult star in attendance that night, joined in to confirm Adriana's side of events. After last night, everyone should know that yes, Lana Rhodes did attack Adriana Chechik after a temper tantrum for not winning an award. And yes, Lana Rhodes is on drugs. She asked for multiple drugs, including heroin over the weekend. This is not a rumor, this is the truth. This girl walks around and thinks she's better than all of us. But guess what? Just being pretty doesn't win you awards, Lana Rhodes. And Adriana did not hit back. Lana has not one mark on her. And after all this chaos, she did yet another move for attention because no one was giving her pity. That move ended her up in a psych ward. The truth isn't pretty, but it's the truth. And all directors and companies and future award shows should all know the way she acted. For someone to attack Adriana Chechik because they won the award, what the f***? We should not tolerate physical violence. I surmise the pity move Rain is referring to is when Lana jumped into the crocodile-infested waters. Performer Abby Lee Brazil even chimed in with the humorous line, All that glitter ain't gold, bitch. Making matters worse, she was dropped by Derek's agency over the incident, losing her source of income. Derek Hay would go on to state, We wish Lana the best with her future endeavors. While we have enjoyed working with her, we cannot condone her recent behavior. Despite not having video proof of whose account of events is more accurate, what can be said for certain is that it led Lana down a different path after she was kicked from her talent agency. And just as a side note, I do want to point out that after all this transpired, Mr. Hay was accused of sexual abuse, trafficking, and employment standard violations in 2020. He was formally charged with an illegal prostitution scheme and ended up pleading guilty to conspiracy to commit pandering and perjury, eventually taking a plea agreement. He then was sentenced to nine months in a county jail. After getting exiled from the industry, Alana felt relieved, and as she expanded her horizons to other groups outside of the adult space, she met a YouTuber who was making more money than she could have ever made from even her most degrading of videos. It was then that she decided to become a mainstream influencer, quickly growing her Instagram account to millions of followers. It was at this point she began gaining brand deals that gave her an income without having to deal with the side of mental breakdowns. A funny thing happened after she left adult entertainment and started hanging out in the social media sphere. In a counterintuitive turn of events, after Lana left sex work behind, her back catalog of content became bigger than ever before, with her soaring to the spot of the most searched porn star in 2019, reaching 345 million views, despite being fully retired. Around this time of gaining more fans, she reunited with her husband John, who had gotten out of prison and they decided to give the marriage another shot. To many viewers, the relationship seemed a bit odd, since John was very reserved and Lana complained about him not being into her sexual fantasies. I know a really hot guy. I that know a really hot guy. <laughs> yeah, that I want to have a three-way with, but my husband said no. So. You asked him. It's Doesn't like, seem like the kind of guy that would be into that. It's his friend from the gym, and I literally from don't. The gym. I don't want to sleep with anyone. And then I saw this guy and it was just like, he was so beautiful. His refusal to engage in her kinks led to her dismissing the concept of them shooting a threesome together with another girl. In the end, they officially ended their marriage after five years and John has never publicly talked about his time with Lana. With the divorce freshly behind her, she began to interact with famous YouTuber Logan Paul. He contacted Lana to surprise his good friend, Mike Malak, with his favorite adult star. So, that's so sweet. Oh. <laughs> Lana and Mike soon realized that they had a lot in common. Both had used heroin in their youth and bonded over traumatic experiences. They began dating and Lana became a staple in many of the YouTubers' vlogs, upping their views. I no, made a lot of money I mean, on his YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, you were using her. No, no. Wow, no, no, like, no, no, damn. No, we're just messing. We're just... Well, well, I mean, dude, we made money. We made money. From this exposure, Lana created her own YouTube channel and appeared on Logan Paul's podcast in 2020. <laughs> Please welcome Lana Rhodes. Yeah! Yeah! Wow. This is gonna be great. 
It was there she announced she had a big contract with a large adult production house. But mysteriously, this contract was soon cancelled, though not before she was uploading some sexy vlogs. In them, she would try on outfits, show herself with sexual devices, and direct girls in taking off their clothes and playing other lewd games. Lana's popularity took off even more when she started her OnlyFans in 2021. Logan Paul's henchman was very excited about her re-entry into adult content, reaching out to other celebs such as Tana Mojo and Belle Delphine to collab with his girlfriend. Look at this, so Tana Khan joins OnlyFans, and then Big Mike jumps in on that and he goes, let me know when you're ready to work with the queen, I'll make the intro. Wow, look at that. So you're pimping your girlfriend out, does she even know that you're doing this? She even launched her own podcast, Three Girls, One Kitchen, with fellow Instagram models Alexa Adams and Olivia Davis, where they had deep conversations. What are your favorite emojis to receive? I Honest love the little bashful one and then the little hearts around it. Or the print, like the, the blonde princess emoji, because that's me. Lana was receiving tons of success on social media, but it didn't mean that everything in her life was perfect, especially her relationship with Mike leading to a separation. In a very public and media-frenzied ending, Lana held nothing back when discussing what had gone wrong in the relationship. Lana claimed that she had been traumatized by Mike's Grand Theft Auto online sessions, where he would have virtual relationships with female players. On top of this, Mike promised to move in with her, but decided he wasn't ready for commitment, being only the young age of 35. He even moved into a content house with Faze Banks. This was the second time he backed out of moving in, and it was the last straw for Lana. She dumped him that day. The thing is, this breakup was complicated since they had gotten very popular being in each other's videos. Due to this, at first, the two tried to stay amicable and be friends. Mike took care of her and her dogs following a surgery, but telling each other about their other relationships led to even more fighting. At one point, after promising Lana he wasn't sleeping with anyone else, she discovered a used condom in Mike's bathroom trash. When she confronted him about it, he said he had used it to jerk off, though I'm not sure if he understands what a condom is used for. In retaliation for his lying, Lana posted some of Mike's private messages on Twitter with the caption, Part of my ex's unasked for pros and cons list of dating me. I think I might frame it. It's so funny. For context of what this list is, it all started when Mike's friend Dave reached out to Lana in an attempt for them to talk, since she had blocked Mike. When she refused, Dave would send a picture of Mike's way of mulling over the relationship. This included pros such as her being the prettiest girl on earth, hands down, extremely loyal in relationships, hardworking, successful, wild sex appeal, caring and attentive. I feel compelled to save you from how the world sees has seen you in the past. Surrounded you with a loving family slash normal life. Good for my business slash networking. See caveat. On the opposite end, Mike created categories for her cons. The first being major deal breakers that require deep and radical change. Sickly obsessed with social normalities, even though everything your life is about is outside the box. Then shaming for my liberal thinking and approach to life. Another layer of hypocrisy. Extremely needy when it comes to time together. Relatively unwilling to get involved with activities you know I like. Gym, cycling. Under the second section, minor issues that some people would consider deal breakers that require habitual revisions, he lists chewing with mouth fully open, making slop noises, almost on purpose, when I've told you a thousand times how disgusting it is. He later spoke about his breakup, citing another reason for the split being her refusal to participate in threesomes. She was not cool with, with other women, um which obviously like would seem strange but but for her like that's not what she was looking for. She was looking for a, a a true partner that was locked in um and and I just wasn't at the time. I was so focused on growing my brand and my career and and all that stuff. So See, it is interesting to point out that Lana never shared the entire con list, making me wonder what else Mike put on there that she didn't want to share publicly. Mike also claims it was him who ended the relationship, but not Lana, because of, quote, insane fights. Like, if you had a knife right now in your hand, <laughs> one, 
seen that before. I have seen that before. It's one of the reasons we're not dating anymore. Juana recently revealed that her and Mike were never really in love, but it was convenient for work, explaining that their feelings were forced, though from what I've seen, this might just be the coping mechanism of a heartbroken woman. I say this because she has gone on to be highly critical of Mike's new girlfriend, saying that she wanted to put her in a wood chipper on her Tumblr page before quietly deleting it. After Lana and Mike ended all talks of ever getting back together, she moved on to dating other people. Only a few months after officially calling it quits with Mike, though, Lana shocked the social media world when she announced she was pregnant. This led the internet to originally believe that Mike was the father. Not long after, though, he publicly dismissed this rumor, even though Mike was the last person she had slept with. As it turns out, she was already pregnant, but juggling multiple sexual partners at the same time. I am having a baby Michael Maylock. Well, no, you're not. That's not true. <laughs> Fast forward nine months, and Lana welcomed her son, Milo, to the world on January 8th, 2021. Since then, she has refused to name the baby daddy publicly, but it doesn't mean that people close to Lana don't know the identity. Censored for online viewers, Logan Paul revealed the baby daddy's name in a podcast, and the reaction of his guest made it clear it was a well-known public figure. She's doing well. She got a kid now with, yeah. a, with a big-time NBA player. Really? Yeah. Who's the player? Nah. <laughs> wow! Lana's reasoning for why she is not revealing the father is a bit weird. On one hand, she claims that the dad does not want to be involved, so she refuses to take child support. But on the other hand, Lana claimed to have refused help, fearing that she would have to split custody with the father. This doesn't quite make sense, because if he didn't want to be involved, why would she worry about custody? For me, it's like all about protecting my child. If the dad's not interested in seeing your child, hasn't really shown to have a care in the world about him, mm -hmm. and almost has like a negative mindset about it, I would then have to give him rights to my child, put him on the birth certificate, which he's not on, and my child would possibly have to go be alone with him without me, and I wouldn't be able to protect my child, and I don't know if this man is safe for my child to be around. Regardless, her refusal to name the dad sent internet users and social media news outlets into a frenzy to identify the man to no avail. So I decided to take a shot at figuring it out for this video. To start off, despite not naming the father directly, the media has gathered three significant hints about who he is. The first clue was that she confirmed that the dad was an NBA player. Did have um, FDA DNA in me for A1. Secondly, she mentioned that he played for the Brooklyn Nets. And thirdly, he was allegedly a Libra. On top of this, you'll also see a lot of people claiming it's either Bruce Brown, Kevin Durant, or Blake Griffin. The most recent of them being accused is Bruce Brown Jr., as he played for the Nets between 2020 and 2021. Lana posted pictures of him on her Instagram story and even commented that he was looking good. However, it's likely he was just seeing her after the pregnancy as Lana posted this material in 2023. On top of this, he does not have the correct Zodiac sign, which would also disqualify Blake Griffin. If you look at the Brooklyn Nets roster from 2020 to 2021, you'll find that Kevin Durant was actually the only Libra listed. So I was thinking it must be him. But, as I looked into the story further, I actually found it difficult to pinpoint where Lana said that the father was a Libra. The news outlets that mention this lack sources, but eventually I did discover where it came from. On May 25th, 2021, Lana spoke on her podcast about Zodiac sign compatibility. She tells a story about going on a date in New York just two weeks prior, which resulted in her leaving halfway through because there was no chemistry because he was a Libra. This is where the alleged hit originated, but I find it difficult to believe that this is the father of her child since she had no connection with him. And he was serious. He wasn't just like saying that to shut down the conversation. He literally just was just, nothing there like he's that. not yeah. spicy enough for yeah. me. Yeah. And um, I couldn't help but compare him to like other people that I had met prior. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, this just isn't for me. On top of this, Alana got pregnant in April, but met this man who was a Libra a month later in May. Meaning the clip people have been using as a hint it doesn't actually provide us evidence of the baby daddy's identity. Therefore, this discredits the entire Libra Zodiac sign claim that the media has run with. 
However, what everyone ignored was that later in the same podcast, Lana explains that she felt Pisces were best for her, because they were spicy and adventurous. With this new lead, my sight shifted to Blake Griffin since he was a Pisces. This led me to watch her podcast during the month of April when her child was conceived, where a landmine hint was dropped of who she was seeing at the time. While interviewing Bryce Hall, she made an off comment about names that start with B. Wow. What are their names? Like Brandon, Bruce, like just like a bunch of BRs. I don't know all their names. Is that bad? <laughs> Lots of B names lately. Yeah. If that wasn't convincing enough of Blake being the baby daddy, just looking at pictures of the child also seems to show a resemblance. I'm not trying to do anything bad to him. Like, my son looks just like him. On top of all this, I uncovered a clip of Adam22, possibly the most well-connected man in adult entertainment, outright stating Mr. Griffin was the father. She, she has a baby with an NBA player. Yeah, Nobody sure. knows who it is. It's Blake Griffin. Big deal. But uh, Is it's, it actually? Yes. It's is supposed that... to be a secret. Everybody f knows. Uh -huh. With all this, I really have trouble understanding where the mystery about the father comes from. It kind of seems like an open secret. Even with this, Blake Griffin still refuses to be involved in the child's life at all. Lana has even mentioned that he wasn't very nice to her the last time they spoke, and does not believe that he will ever be interested in Milo. Although Lana has shared very little about her son's father in interviews, she's much more open on Tumblr. It's here she explains that he was the first person she talked to after her breakup with Mike. She DM'd him first, and they ended up going to a party together where they were high on mushrooms, and Lana described him as an immature man-child. About a month later, she decided to give him another chance and attended one of his games, which is where he allegedly told Lana he loved her. It was in Miami where they ended up conceiving their son after only having sex twice. Following this, her next interaction with the NBA player was that he called her to make sure she kept quiet about the affair. Four days after she gave birth, the father allegedly FaceTimed her. She thought it was to see the baby, but it turned out to be for the purpose of reminding Lana to keep her mouth closed. She explains that even though she never signed an NDA, she supposedly protected his identity out of love. But again, this is only her side of the story, and there's not much to cross-reference it with. Even though she won't officially name the man that knocked her up, it doesn't mean that Lana wasn't willing to go on podcasts to reveal pretty much anything else during this era. On multiple shows, she shared what it was like to be a single mom, along with turning on the porn industry as a whole. Boy, girl, sex scenes or pornography, I think it's very bad for the girls, and I just don't like the industry at all. Why? Many people were shocked by this comment because she had amassed millions of followers and created an entire career off her time in the adult industry. She specifically goes out of her way saying that, like, it shouldn't exist at all. But I guess she's got her own, or not just her, but other girls that do that, they have their own reasons for it. But at the end of the day, that's what, that's what made you. you yeah. Know? None of these people liked that Lana had seemingly turned her back on the industry, feeling that she was discrediting their business. She later claimed that it was taken out of context. Yeah, so a lot of things I've said have been taken out of context or like a tiny little bit. Like one thing that went viral was people said that I said that all porn should be illegal. <laughs> I definitely didn't say that. This wasn't the only instance of outrage. Social media refused to give Lana a break, especially when not too long after her previous comments, she was involved in a pump and dump crypto scheme, resulting in investors losing their money. Now she's claiming it's not her fault. Her community was just getting too negative for her. One of those negative comments was about how this person can't feed their kids because they invested it all into a Star's JPEG collection. Quote, I spent what I can't lose, spent 4K. No job, have a two-year-old son. If only someone bought my Christmas, Lana. She started a non-fungible token project featuring cartoon artworks of herself being sold as a valuable investment. After fans invested, she then drained $1.5 million in funds and left the project because the collectors supposedly upset her. When people such as CoffeeZilla confronted the ex-adult star on the situation, she became confrontational, saying that people shouldn't be worried about this because of the conflict in Ukraine. When the YouTuber pushed back, she responded furiously. YouTubers are f***ing sickos. Diseases of the internet who will do anything and say anything for views. 
I have a one month old baby to take care of. Just what I wanted to do was scam people. Get the fuck out of here with this bullshit. Just because a project does not go as planned does not mean there was any ill intent behind it. People are sick trying to cause trouble for views. Lana then deleted her Twitter account. This didn't stop Adam22 from weighing in on the situation. That's what they're mad about. You like, pulled all the money out and you kept it because you wanted it yeah. and you screwed over your fans. That's the whole thing. After the NFT scandal, the internet refused to hold back on Lana. The new mom likely wanted to put the outside world aside and focus fully on being a mother, which proved to be difficult. She experienced a turbulent pregnancy that caused her to develop a form of diabetes and gain a lot of weight. This led her to develop severe depression where she was not able to leave her bed for 10 months. As it would turn out, having her son didn't instantly make her life perfect either. Lana would have to rehome her dogs when they became aggressive towards the baby. Despite paying for hours of training, the rescue canines just couldn't coexist with her new life. She continued to experience severe depression following her son's birth, leading to an eating disorder as she tried to lose the baby weight because of the internet's cruel comments towards her, as well as struggling with self-confidence. This led her to start taking antidepressants such as Welbutrin, Prozac, and Gabapentin. She would go on to explain that she no longer believes she has the ability to bond with partners due to her past. Miss Rhodes became so unhealthy in her eating habits that she gave herself scurvy and lost chunks of her lower gums. As if things couldn't get worse, she also was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. She believes this is because her feelings were not validated as a child, and is why she could not say no to her toxic managers while she was in the industry admitting that she sometimes doesn't even know who she is. Or is I just I just wondered like I thought your real name was Lana and then I was yeah. doing some well, Sometimes I think my real name is Lana. Yeah, I was doing some research before this podcast and it was like Amara Maple and I was like, "Huh?" like and All then my I, friends call me Lana. Really? Yeah. So you just that's just that's just um, it might be like going back to like the BPD thing like you really don't have like a sense of identity, so I've never really resonated with like having a name. On top of this, when Lana looks at her old adult videos, she doesn't even recognize herself, all symptoms of BPD. She even claimed to possibly have autism following the many doctor's appointments and complications she has had with her mental health following the birth. Going through all this turmoil must have been incredibly difficult for Lana to do alone, but she consistently leaned on her ex-boyfriend, Mike, up until he recently got a girlfriend who no longer wanted him around Lana. I don't think she likes me either. But... I don't think, I mean, I don't like saying bad things for other girls, but I just don't think she likes other girls in general, is yeah. what it seems like, so... In 2023, Alana started a Tumblr blog where she wrote highly depressing poems about her life and answered fan questions. These poems idealize self-harm and gives us a very clear understanding of the dark thoughts Alana has been experiencing. I just want him to stalk my photos when he misses me and think, whoa, I could eat this one girl's pussy for the rest of my life and never get tired of the taste. I just want to be the first thing he thinks about when he wakes up and the last when he goes to sleep. I want him to see calm when he looks into my eyes. I want to be his exception. You can't say Lana's not a romantic. Additionally, on this account, she opened up more about her son's father. Lana claims that the dad wants her to do OnlyFans to pay the bills rather than give them money while he lives in a $20 million house. This page seems to consist of Lana's random ramblings, as she shares anything from horrible childhood experiences to updates about her labiaplasty to how she wants to marry a billionaire, but then changes her mind and then says she's going to be the billionaire herself. These posts are not written by someone who seems to be completely mentally sound, yet Lana gives her fans life advice. Someone asked, just got dumped over the phone a few days before my birthday. We were dating for a year. Lana's response to this is advising the fan to send the ex's best friend their nudes. Beyond this, she talks about current relationships, ruminating on their golden flesh sword, and how being a sister wife is appealing to her. As of 2024, Lana plans to work more on a clothing line, Poster Girl. The brand's promo shows two women blowing up her breasts. On top of that, she relaunched her OnlyFans, feeling that being naked can be creative and beautiful, even working as a high-fashion runway model despite only being 5'5". Five five. 
She recently bought a mobile home that she and her son are living in because she no longer cares about material things. What seems to be the most concerning part about the influencer's life currently is her casual use of drugs including ketamine. What's odd is in the same breath she talks about doing drugs, she also claims she doesn't really do drugs. I don't really like the drug comments just because I don't really do drugs all that often. Like I know I said I did ketamine a few days ago, but this is maybe like <laughs> once a month. Yeah. And so it's not like doing drugs consistently enough for it to change my appearance. This claim becomes even more egregious considering the amount of time she brings up drug use in interviews. I was doing, I did heroin. I'm drunk as shit and like I did some K, like they all were doing like coke and I ended up doing coke. She took to Tumblr to defend her drug use, claiming that because she doesn't have much dopamine as other people, she doesn't enjoy them and bragged about how she didn't need to go to rehab after she did heroin at 16. She goes on to state that she thinks narcotics are fine because most of her friends do them. And that leads us to the current day, where Lana is doing the best she can to keep her head above water, both financially and mentally, while raising a child on her own. While many are quick to mock the ex-adult model for her not taking accountability for many of her actions, including much of her sex work, having a child with someone who had no interest in being a father, and being involved in a sleazy crypto scheme, it's clear that she has had a rough go of it. Growing up with an abusive father, absent mother, and mentally unwell sister before getting sucked into the degenerate world of a creepy cult leader in her early teens, proceeded by marrying a criminal at 18, shows she probably didn't have much of a chance at normalcy. So while I can't claim to relate to Lana Rhodes' story, I can at least empathize with the events that led her to the state she's in today.